Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Console Room Year 11. We hope you're having a great time at the convention. Uh, we hope you're, uh, if you're on site, you're enjoying the in-person convention. If you're joining us virtually, welcome. Uh, we are, um, this is a panel on geek health, and we encourage you throughout the, the convention and afterwards to check out YouTube, uh, Console Room's YouTube channel for all sorts of great panel discussions. So today mm -hmm. we're talking about geek health. Um, and I and my associate will introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Gordon Domowski. I am the uh, lead organizer for the Chicago Doctor Who Meetup, and I'm also a professional writer and author. Uh, my name is Ben Ellis. I am a member of the Council Room ConCom, and I have been kind of a member since the beginning. I am also in charge of our small theater group called the Council Room Radio Players. And when I'm not doing that, I work for a local theater here in Minnesota called The Guthrie, selling tickets. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, and uh, yeah, and it's it's interesting to to talk about um, geek health because a lot of mm -hmm. times I know that mental health and physical health issues have really come to the forefront in the past five years. Um, so let's begin by talking about um, maybe bring about what what does geek health mean to to each of us and kind of how we like how has geekdom impacted our health and and how has health impacted our geekdom so. Ben, if you wouldn't mind just kicking us off. Oh, not at all. I think, you know, it all starts when you're young. And I rem and I think when you're, it's like when I was a young teenager, Doctor Who was my first fandom. But that came to mind, I'm going to high school in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where not a lot of other people are Doctor Who fans. So you kind of feel like an outcast, you know, and then eventually you think you find a group of fellow fans that you get along with. But like the best way I can put it is they set standards too high. And by that I mean you're the high school student maybe working a part-time job and you can afford one Doctor Who VHS a month, if anything. But here are these guys um talking about, oh yeah, I bought the new box set from England and blah blah blah. And you get jealous and you sacrifice you work too much, you obsess, and it gets to a point where it messes your mental health up. This is your physical health up because you want to be like those guys mm -hmm. who can buy the box sets, but you can't. It, just, it really messes with your head and it messes with your health where, <clears throat> you know, you get to a point where you're, you just not, you're not yourself. You know, you're, you, you're like, you're in sync, but you, you think you're in sync, but you're not in sync. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My, my story is similar, except I, um, I think it might be safe to say I came of age at an earlier time than you did, because mm -hmm. when I was a fan, you know, I was a Doctor Who fan growing up and there was a mm -hmm. um, the first was that it was a suburban group. And mm -hmm. uh, so my one of my mom's older friends had to take me. So I was a high schooler and everyone else was in their older upper 20s, you know, mm -hmm. lower yeah. 20s. But we were talking it was a time where. A lot of Doctor Who, there's a lot of tape trading, so oh, yeah. it was the. You might you might have the guy who has a cousin in England who would have a video recorder or tape the episodes and send them back. Or you had someone who um, I remember very well. Uh, I was trying to buy a copy of uh, Terror of the Autons because I had never seen it. And this this was a bootleg mm -hmm. copy. This wasn't like mm -hmm. a DVD or the VHS. And the guy wanted. Like a, now, do you remember? Gordon, was this for is for fandom fan sake here? Was this color or black and white? Do you remember? I think it was color. Oh, nice. I think it was like the Canadian print or um Okay. But anyway, the guy wanted fifty bucks. I'm like, I'll give you twenty. But then that kind of started that whole because it's very gatekeepery. It was kind of the idea that you had mm -hmm. to be the Uber fan, you know. It wasn't just enough to like Doctor Who. You had to um embrace it and indulge it. And that and I'd always mm -hmm. and I'd come from a background of a lot of um I mean as an only child, I was um my parents were divorced, so I was dealing with a lot of stresses at the time. And so um, I was going to those where I started pushing myself to be more. And it wasn't just in a Doctor Who fandom. It was just all out. So after a while, I kind of had to stop and go, OK, you know, this 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 isn't working for me. And so for me, it's um, I've always tried to have a balance between fandom and health. You know, if um, not just mm. physical health, but 
mental health. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that it's, it's one of those things where, although it's, there's a lot of talk about it in general culture now, I think in fandom, you know, I think a lot of those old school fans are, there's a lot of pushback from them. Um, would you, mm. how, how would you see that? I would say that there is a lot of pushback. I think it's just one of the things I would ever was really, I mean, I do basic manners, but I, there's no way to know etiquette in these situations mm -hmm. because now being older at 41, I could understand how like, you know, so I, think I remember the very first doctor who club event that I went to, they showed the underwater menace episode three, mm -hmm. which no one had, it was in a vault in England. And I wanted a copy, but I didn't know how to ask. I didn't know the etiquette ins and outs. And it got to the point where I just annoyed the heck out of one of the guys, and he finally made me a copy. But I wish I hadn't done that. And But on the other hand, it was kind of frustrating because I so badly wanted to be accepted by these guys. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't making my physical or mental health a priority in doing this, you know, because for me, I was like, it was Doctor Who, cool. Doctor Who school work. Mm -hmm. you know and it's kind of been a drain on me since like i was 15 mm -hmm. you know where it's like i'm always going after the next thing always trying to be accepted by this other group of fans who don't accept me mm -hmm. but i will say this it's gotten better yeah and I, um go ahead yeah i was about to say you know i um you know i the the other complication for me was that i was very overweight i mean i was I was the the fat kid in class. So, mm -hmm. um, but what I, I learned over, and I was, the, I was the kind of guy who, because I grew up during the era and I am dating myself when Dr. Mm -hmm. Who was on Sunday nights on PBS. Like if I need, if I had homework due Monday, I was mm -hmm. spending my Sunday nights with, you know, Genesis, of the Daleks in the background or, mm -hmm. you know, I was watching Dr. Who, but also working. Um, and eventually it took until, you know, when I got older, when I started, and I think it's one of the things that, that Doctor Who inspired me to do, because every three years, you have a regeneration. You have mm -hmm. a person moving from one to another. So you'd have like um, Pertwee's Doctor moving from being super arrogant, and I had to face my fear, mm -hmm. to Tom Baker. You yeah. know, Tom Baker accepting that, yeah, this is the end, but I'm ready for it. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of learned... Um, in terms of my mental health, I learned that, you know, you can go to therapy, you can actually work through some of these issues yeah. um, and then um, get better and change. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I no, I can really relate to that, too, because there are certain moments in my life where the doctor's wisdom has come and helped me out. Um, I just think of that what you said about Pertwee. Um, for a while, I was unemployed severely depressed about this because I wanted to work, you know, and I, and I'm going to paraphrase this line. It's in, it's in Planet of the Daleks where the doctor's talking about courage is being able to do the thing you don't want to do. And one of my biggest fears, a lot of them is rejection. I didn't want to be rejected by these jobs because, Hey, I was a guy with a college degree. You know, they should be banging down the door to hire me. But every time that I filled out a job application, that quote would always kind of be in my head, you know, about courage and being brave. Because I wanted to be running, I wanted to run and be scared. And in terms of my health, you know, I've used it kind of as a from I'm overweight myself, and I've used it as a motivation to feel better about myself and more confident about myself. Because one of the things I am doing this weekend is I'm going to get to interview Sylvester McCoy. And I'm just, I'm not saying like getting skinny was the answer to interviewing Sylvester McCoy. If only it could be, um, well, it could be that way. It's that I had to work on myself to have the confidence to say to people, hey, this is something I would really like to do. Because I don't know if you see this, but sometimes in fandom, there's a bit of a hierarchy. Yes. From the old fans and the new fans. Yeah, I um without telling too many tales out of school, I kind of saw a little bit of that when I worked with Chicago TARDIS, where there were um not within say the volunteers and other staff at the various departments, mm -hmm. but within the leadership mm -hmm. that there's this 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 attitude of 
and even now, I mean, I run a meetup and there are, I still run into like that old school mentality of, um, I've heard the new series being described as like, well, it's not the real show. It's, um, you know, the only reason why I say people like, why Matt Smith got popular was because of teenage fans, teenage female fans. Um, and uh, I think sometimes you, you know, uh, and I've had to deal, the way I deal with that is, I set very, I set boundaries with myself, but I've, mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to turn this, this panel. There's other things we want to talk about with this panel. Oh yeah. But, but um, I mean, there've been several times, like since Jody Whitaker was announced, <laughs> I've been harassed online and offline. And mm -hmm. there've been times where I've had to say, you know what, you're out. And I think people, yeah. and then there's a reaction of how dare you, I've been in fandom for blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, mm -hmm. this, this goes beyond fandom. This is just, plain bad behavior and i think it's one of the things when we talk about geek health and and mental health it's some of the things i think a lot of us that i had to learn very on is setting a boundary um yeah. i was the other thing is that i was say i was about 12 13 years ago i was diagnosed as having um type 2 diabe diabetes which means that Hey, Gordon, can we pause for a minute? I got a glass of water. My throat's drying up. No problem. We'll be back shortly. Um, and we're back. And as I was saying, um, first, let me highlight that what Ben practiced is a good form of self-care, and we'll get to that. But with type 2 diabetes, that meant that I had to take more medications, but also I had to watch what I eat and also look at changing certain things like alcohol consumption. Um, and so I gave up drinking and it wasn't a big, like you know, I didn't go to Alcoholics Anonymous or anything like that. It was just, mm -hmm. I knew that it wasn't doing anything for me. And mm -hmm. I've had to extend that, that kind of thinking in terms of where I hold events. So it's like maybe holding events at bars isn't always conducive. Mm -hmm. um, maybe looking at accessibility issues and menu, you, you know, menu. I mean, if someone chooses to be vegan because they're, into animal welfare or because they're into diet you know maintaining their health i don't get to make mm -hmm. that 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 call mm -hmm. i think it also impacted like you know um what i actually do i mean i'm not sitting around wondering oh um what am i you know oh i'm but i think one of the things about being in fandom especially with conventions is that like i don't know if um yeah, I, I don't know about where console rooms being held, but like C2E2, mm -hmm. it's held at Merchandise Mart and you'll get, a, there's a bunch of food vendors. It's like you can spend seven bucks for a slice of Connie's or you can get, mm -hmm. you know, you get free samples of energy drinks. And that's like I a learned, big event center, right? Where they have C2E2? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And so like one of the things I had to learn was I carry a water, refillable water bottle. I mm -hmm. also stock up on healthy snacks to get me through because... I'd rather spend ten dollars at Dollar Tree on like nuts and dried fruit and things that I know mm -hmm. will not hurt me that badly mm -hmm. than I will on junk food where, you know, even with medication, that's a spike in blood sugar that maybe I shouldn't afford. Yeah. I think for me when I when I'm attending this convention, the trick is, you know, our con suite, I'll give it credit, that does have healthy stuff and it has water in it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, just to be like, because, you know, the thing with my, you know, mental health and my diabetes is sometimes I don't want to eat. And I'm also on a medication. I wish I knew the name of it. Like, doesn't, it's a diabetes medication they inject in you. Doesn't want to make you eat as much, but it makes you want to lose weight. Um, I don't see. I want to say it's Vanace, but I don't, don't quote me on that. Okay. So, but what I try to do is like, I budget for like one small meal at McDonald's, or like chicken nuggets. Or maybe I'll go to the hotel restaurant and get the appetizer. Because the trick with it, my, this is what I've been told, Gordon, and maybe you've heard different. It's all about balance. Mm -hmm. It's not about cutting yourself off so you could never have French fries again. Just don't have it all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, you know, I, think, and I think, go ahead. Depending on where the convention is, like, because we have, um, well, a few months ago, we had Twin Cities Con at the convention center. And that's all junk food. <laughs> It's also ten dollars for a bottle of water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the trick for me was, you know, I got that water and I made it last. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, luckily with Chicago Tardis, it's near, it's literally within walking distance of a Target, so you can get yeah. healthy food. Um, 
and I take my cue when it comes to conventions and dining. Um, mm. Kevin Murphy of Mer Mystery Science Theater has a book called A Year at the Movies. Yes, and, I love that book. Yeah. And on Thanksgiving, he talks about on Thanksgiving, he decided to go to a theater. And he's going to do a whole uh, Thanksgiving dinner. So he has mm -hmm. he has his like man bag, his like brief attache with food in it. But then he creates a special coat where it's like the tables along the back and he's got like gravy in one pocket, um, like all the fixings in another pocket. Um, and that just inspired me that like, you know, if I'm at a convention, I usually have a bag anyway. Mm -hmm. Keep my snacks and, and, and water in there. Mm -hmm. Um, when I go see movies, um, I'm, you know, um, I'm not going to say where I see movies, but I, ha I often will bring my own snacks there because I, I don't believe in first, you know, a lot of the stuff they have isn't necessarily healthy anyway, but well, it's also really just overpriced in my opinion yeah, too. That's what I was about to say, but, um, yeah, but um, it, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I was about to say, but you know, I think it's one of the things in geek culture that there's one group that talks about it a lot, but another group that kind of decries it, which is self-care. Like, yeah. you know, a lot of health is just about valuing who you are and taking a break from some things. Um, earlier this year, back in April, I contracted COVID mm -hmm. for the first time ever. And for those who are thinking, oh, it's like a cold. No, it's not. Um, imagine jumping, jumping out in front of a moving truck and surviving, getting hit by the truck and surviving, that's what COVID feels like. And I had to, that week, I um, and the tail end of it, when I would have been clear, I had a meetup at a, an in-person meetup. Ooh. And I thought, you know, I'm really not feeling it after the official Ooh. time. So I just decided, you know what, I'm making it remote because could I have been non-contagious? Probably, mm -hmm. um, but I also, um, I also wasn't going to risk it. And um, it's also for for those who might be think like it's also why I know a lot of people are are up and number. Oh, you're wearing masks. You're being you're too worried about your health. Hey, somebody wants to wear a mask at a convention, whether or not the convention has a masking policy, that's on them. That to me says they value their health. I don't think we're in a position with anyone at a convention to judge them if they're not wearing wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. I think the thing people have people ask it people have to ask themselves is if I'm having an issue if I'm having an issue, is this because you know I'm uncomfortable? Or something else is making me uncomfortable? You know, it's it to me it's like I I'm I do attend conventions. Most of the conventions that I attend on Minnesota are non masking. It's not a policy. But if I was asked to mask, I would. Mm -hmm. You know, it's simple as that. I think, you know, I think, you know, the, the thing is, the way geek culture is portrayed in pop culture, I take I take a lot of cues from that, where it's like, oh, you drink Mountain Dew, you stay up all night playing D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about the consequences. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about the, the true honesty of it. Like, okay, so I know this is kind of off reference, but I was, like, I was watching the movie Elf last night, and you know, it's like you see the scene where Buddy is putting like candy and maple syrup on this spaghetti, and I'm like, oh my gosh, how's he not gonna die from that? You know, it, I guess you know, the what I'm trying to say is, you know, we have to find in terms of like having good mental and physical health in the geek community, we have to find our own way and we have to look for answers on our own and not. Rely on pop culture as much or very mm -hmm. little. Yeah, and I, I think, yeah, and I also think that with geek culture, um, a lot of times there's this, um, because there's this attitude of you have to, you can't just be a fan of something. You have to be an uber fan. You have to oh, yeah. defend your fandom's honor. Um, and I've dealt with that with the, um, with, the, the who meetup um you know most people mm -hmm. in the meetup are wonderful generous lovely human beings mm -hmm. but again after jody whitaker was was on i mean i had someone harass me because i was um i was touting females uh, female supremacy but he was one of those old school fans he, you know, he had a bowler hat you know he's a poker playing cigar chomping dude who liked dom baker said, okay fine <laughs> goodbye and people get um, 
I had one person who was a little too creepy towards me and towards other people. And when I said, hey, maybe you want to change that, at first it was, oh, I'm sorry. And then a year afterwards, just out of the blue, I'm arrogant. I do this. You know, the the the, the meetup sucks. And mm. it was, meetup sucks. You know, I, I, I'm too arrogant. I should leave and let someone else take over, but not him because he's too busy. Yeah. And it's, I don't want to turn this into like a, a gripe session, but I think. No, no you're just, you're, but you're being very honest because I think, you know, for, and for me, it's not as much. Because when we had Dr. Who meetup, I was a part of it. And we, because we used to have one here in Minnesota and we kind of still do. Um, you know, it was very different because, you know, I enjoy the series all over, old old and new. Mm-hmm. But one of the things is, you know, I'm a big fan of the old series. And if I have a chance to show someone an old series episode that I think is great, but maybe would bore them to tears, I might, I, I'd do it at the time. One of the things I, I, I came up with this term because there are a lot of times where people in fandom at conventions will say some really absurd thing about classic Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. For example, someone was someone said to me, "Well, why can't they recolorize all the episodes?" And you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, and part of me wants to go. Well, that's not how they were broadcast, and that's not the intent they were broadcasted for. But I have to shut up mm-hmm. because that's my I call it my fandom privilege. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yes, I may feel that way, and that's fine for me to feel that way. But it's not going to help. No, and this may be a person I just despise or not like at all. But how is that going to look if, like, we're in a hotel lobby and I'm saying, well, you're the biggest dope in the world if you think that? It's going to make me look like a jackass. Yeah. Well, I'm just like, well, that's your opinion. More power to you. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of, I, I kind of, you know, kind of, I was, I always look at it from more of the, there's a difference between the person who, like if somebody wanted to colorize all the the remaining black and white episodes to me it's like okay you know we we've, we've still got the black and white episodes and sure. i don't want i'm not going on too much of a tangent but like like with the recent daleks in Those color two. i know people who who process against that but i also realize it's not meant for me but when i'm talking about setting boundaries with with members mm-hmm. it's almost like you know we talk about fan entitlement um and my attitude is i have no problem with people you know, um, for my own mental health, that means if somebody, if I, if I have to tell someone, Hey, look, your behavior, we need to take a break a while, or you're no longer welcome. You know, a me, a doctor who meet up and I'm going to get, I know there'll be some controversy when I say this, it's not a right. It's a privilege. It's just, I agree. I mean, the reason these things are starting up is because a fan said, Hey, I want to meet other doctor who fans in my area. Mm Mm-hmm. It's not saying, hey, I want to be the Doctor Who overlord and we're going to watch this black and white reconstruction of the savages. You know, It's because you want to connect with other people. And that's what, mm-hmm. whether it's Doctor Who meetup or being part of a convention, you want to meet other fans and connect. So you have this passion mm-hmm. about Doctor Who. And I think, you know, the thing is, like, with a lot of people, and they're going to have their opinions and they're going to say really stupid stuff. And I know it's a bit harsh when I say that. But the thing I've learned is you can do two things. Mm-hmm. After a meeting is over, you can bitch to one of your best friends about it. Or you just let it go. Mm-hmm. And I, the way I see it is that, you know, we're all going through, I, I think I think I'm, it's safe in saying that right now in our current time, for a mm-hmm. lot of people, it's an existential garbage fire. Yeah. You, pick, you pick whatever's going on, the economy, jobs, politics, et cetera. Mm-hmm. We're all here because we like Doctor Who. Yeah. We all have different opinions about what's going on. And yeah. to me, it boils down to, I don't get to take, you know, talking about health, that meetup, whether we're seeing mm-hmm. something, we're talking to people, whatever. It's not about me all of a sudden. It's about the group. And it's also about... No, it is about the group. It's really about, we are coming together for one purpose, because mm-hmm. we just need a break. Yeah. And I think for a lot, and I think that's something that gets in the, this kind of higher clash gets forgotten is that mm-hmm. we all love the same thing and that it's, mm-hmm. um, 
it's okay if people don't necessarily see it the same way you do. Oh, yeah. And I think and it's also helped my mental health because it's like this year has been a personally rough year for, for mm -hmm. multiple reasons. COVID, mm -hmm. um, I had a sudden move into a new place that I'm not going to go into mm -hmm. details here because it's too long into it. You had your whole housing thing going on this year, I know, I saw. Yes. Um, and so <clears throat> I'm in a better place now. Mm -hmm. But I also had to learn that, like, that meant that at one point I had to say, meet up, housing issues, self, yeah. you know, self care. Self care always comes forward. Um, oh, yeah. It's at times where I've had to tell people, because in my meetup, and I'm sure you have it with console room, you have people mm -hmm. saying, well, you should do this and you should do that. And I have to say, okay, I, I don't mind hearing your, your, I don't mm -hmm. mind hearing your, your you know, I, I appreciate the input, but just remember, this is not a democracy. It's a benevolent mm -hmm. dictatorship. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And it's like, if I had, um, you know, like this year, I need to rebuild, you know, kind of build further on um, Patreon because certain things are mm -hmm. going to have to be let to the side because Patreon has gone down because a lot of people have financial issues. Um, mm. But it's also really, to me, the ultimate thing about, about health is that Doctor Who with any kind of fandom, mm -hmm. for me, it's about, is it bringing joy into my life? Is mm -hmm. it bringing relief? Or, or am I starting to think, oh God, Doctor Who is my job now. Yeah, and I, I felt that way sometimes too because you know there are times we have meetings and, uh, for consort. Uh, most of our meetings are all hybrid, but sometimes we do meet in public. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you know I have to. Uh, I'll be like to myself, "Well, Ben, you got to be a good concom member and sludge all the way to the all the way to this town twenty minutes away." And maybe this is a day I'm at work. It's been a long day, mm -hmm. and I have to argue with myself and. And say no, you're tired. Do the remote thing, or just shoot an email to the main email saying, "Hey, nothing to report for this month." Mm -hmm. You know, it's really hard because you know, I I can't. I don't know if you've experienced this, but I get paranoid. You know, I get paranoid that if I'm not there, someone is going to say, "Well, he must not give a crap," and then they'll take over for me. That I know, and I've talked to. You know, here's the thing. Whenever you're feeling a doubt like that, talk to a friend on the con committee or someone you volunteer with. Don't don't jump to that conclusion. Mm -hmm. You know, and because it's not like curable things will happen, but it's just like well, probably if you indulge in it, if you indulge in it, um, but it makes things worse if you don't talk about it. Yeah, I mean, I. I don't really get paranoid because I I've had to really learn. Um, and part of this comes from being my mom's caregiver for six years where mm -hmm. I was isolated, not for, you know, mm -hmm. for a lot of times that, 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 you know, it wasn't even a choice between self care and um, caring from and caring for mom and fandom. It was okay. I had to move a lot of my schedule around because of mom's health issues. Mm -hmm. um, and what I kind of learned is that, and why I started adopting the attitude of is, you know, I know there are people out there thinking about me. They, they, they know I'm, they know I'm going through this. Mm. It's just that I don't, and I don't feel the need to always say, um, and I still need to break my isolation once in a while and call and say, Hey, look, this is what's going on. But mm. it's, um, <clears throat> but what I've had to learn is I think a lot of help, uh, geek help, I think comes from, building that sense of self-esteem and valuing mm -hmm. ourselves, which I don't think, which fandom sometimes does its best to try to tear us down on. It's, oh yeah, majorly. Um, you know, when the last person who I asked to, you know, um, earlier this year, um, there were, they were the three offspring of one of our members who decided to be disruptive and be the center of attention. You know, one is above 18, two were below 18. Mm -hmm. And when it was above 18, decided to chew me out because they felt that the code of conduct wasn't, uh, the code of conduct was not fair. And this is after I said, hey, mm -hmm. let's take a temporary break for a while. Mm -hmm. They didn't recognize our code of conduct. The only reason I said it was because I wanted control over my meetup and how dare I do this thing because I didn't separate that, you know, I'll mm -hmm. summarize this. I don't think she, I think this person wanted me to throw their siblings under the bus. And I'm like, no, you know, growing up, we had three rules. The mm -hmm. first, 
me and my cousins had three roles. The first is mm -hmm. my parents didn't care whether you, what you did in your own house, but in their house, you followed their rules. Uh, the secondly, the oh, second yeah. one is um, I don't care who made the mess. Y'all are going to clean it up. And the third yeah. is the um, don't do the crime if you can't do the time with the corollary. Keep your eye on the sparrow when the going gets narrow. Mm. Um, but it's it's I think it's that and I could have let it it bothered me for a day or two. But I realized is that this person wasn't doing it to mm -hmm. it was one to be mean, but also it was because it was like, OK, they needed the, the final word. They have it. But I think. Mm -hmm. in in growing through fandom i'm no longer that geeky kid who was with another adult mm -hmm. who felt out of place it's like no yeah. i can kind of hold my own and i mm -hmm. you know, it's also a reminder that yeah there are people you know i have friends you know there was um a friend of mine is a dancer and mm -hmm. i had missed her troop for a couple of months because of the move and I'd mentioned, yeah, I'll be, I'll be coming on Facebook. And she said, oh, yes, it would be lovely to see you. Not, hey, it'd be great to see you. And I, I thought, without reading too much into it, I was like, yeah, that's a really nice sentiment. And I mm -hmm. think when we talk about our overall health, you know, we value our health with, mm -hmm. you know, eating appropriately, you know, mm -hmm. getting exercise. Like when I do a convention, I make sure I have good shoes and socks on because that's how I get oh, yeah. a lot of exercise. But it also comes... For me, it's, I have a walker. I use a walker. Mm -hmm. get around and i did my first chicago tardis and a walker wow that was exhausting and it's not it's not a big it's the same hotel lombard mm -hmm. you know but just when things change you notice it mm -hmm. like when i went to this convention back in november i was i was just been there for five hours i was wiped out mm -hmm. but then again i i have a well not broken it's healed but my ankle kind of makes things hard um, but no, I mean, you make some good points there too. And I think with whatever someone will say to you in fandom, you can't take it too personally. Because mm -hmm. I've had people talk a lot of crap about me and how I'm uh, ill prepared and how I never get things done. I don't care. But I think what's interesting is that as we get older, though, we unlearn the behaviors that we thought we had to do, mm -hmm. you know, to be a part of fandom, to be a part of a group. You know. Yep. See, I have the Adam. opposite. Yeah, I have the opposite problem. People think I'm super right. competent and get everything done, and I'm precise. And it's like, you know, a lot of what I do isn't, you know, when it's important, like running a charity auction. Like, yeah, I need to make sure that the fund, mm -hmm. you know, the funding is there. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't really. Um, but when it comes to everything else, I kind of I do what I can, and you know, I don't need to be that super perfect hyper effective master mm -hmm. of the universe that people perceive me to be now if they still mm. want to perceive me that way that's fine i just you know um other you know other people's opinions of me don't really matter that much anymore mm. Mm. i i fuck it up. Okay, i can dig it i can dig it um i guess like what i'm trying to say is okay i want to use sylvester mccoy as an example because he's our guest of honor this weekend here's a promo for you um, but with my mental health, in my mind, I can tell myself I'm unworthy to interview Sylvester. I don't deserve to interview Sylvester. I know nothing about him. I've seen his episodes of Doctor Who. I saw the Hobbit movies. But I don't know anything. All I had to do for a long time before I asked is I had to say I'm enough. It's a message. You have to like have a repeating message going through your head mm -hmm. when you want to take on a big task in convention. In conventions, I am enough. I am worthy. I am enough. And you know, before I even asked, I had this whole plan where I was going to write our con uh, con chairs and say, "Hey, I know you usually use these people." You know, no, excuse me. What I was going to do is I'm going to write them and say, "What can I do to earn your trust?" Which is kind of a silly thing because I've been with them for eleven years. Go figure. Um, but what I realized is I had to keep the message simple. I would really like to interview Sylvester or do a commentary with him. If that's possible, great. If not, please let me know why. 
because doing something like interviewing a celebrity, it's like going to a job interview or asking to interview a celebrity. It's like going to a job interview. And if you don't get the job, you want to know why you didn't get the job. Because you want to know what you can improve on. Mm -hmm. And I got an email a couple about a month. I got an email recently. Oh, yeah, we want you to do a commentary with Sylvester. I'm like, yes. So it all worked out, but it's all about, I think, to have mental, good mental health about ta big tasks you want to take on in fandom. Whether it's interviewing Sylvester McCoy or getting an autograph from a because here's the other thing, too. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, Gordon. Like, do you ever get nervous asking, like, when you go to a convention, asking an actor for their autograph? Well, since most of the since most of the conventions I've gone to, I've been in the line. Um, mm -hmm. I've never had that, like, um, I run into someone randomly and say, hey, can I have your autograph? No, no, I'm mainly referring, like, to when you go to a convention. Oh, okay. Well, even at a convention, I've never had that, like... Um, I've yeah I don't remember ever having that. Um, actually, I I have. It was um, one year when I was running the the charity auction. Like we had some things that needed autographs. You know, we it's so like someone brought mm -hmm. in a couple of Doctor Who novels, and these were all novels that featured Louise Jameson. So um, it was like I worked with our autograph chair. Can we? Can I come in and have her sign some? And you know, mm -hmm. I had met her once before at a convention, and you know, I. I have to admit, she was one of my favorite companions as a teenager, and I'll just leave that there. And so mm. it's still that kind of, oh, would, would you please, you know, so I had that nervousness. Um, then someone had brought in an actual vintage canine with a little record inside. Oh, neat. Um, and went to John Leeson. I told him, hey, you know, you, you really made my, my youth uh, enjoyable. And he's like, I'm very, you know, puts his arm around me and says in his voice, I'm, I thank you. He signed it. Um, at one point in one year, I had been at uh, a DePaul event that featured Matt Irvine, you know, the, the special effects guy from Classic. Mm -hmm. And yep. I was that annoying fan who knew the answer to every question and never let anyone answer. <laughs> Flash forward to November. I'm in the, at, at, at Chick that year, the, the, uh, I think maybe the, the auction's first or second year. We were in like this little closet where registration was would no, was normally placed, and I'm sitting, and Matt Irvine looks at me and heads straight to me, and he says in his voice, "Oh well, I've I've got it," and I'm like, "Oh great, I'm going to get chewed out for being that obnoxious fan." Um, he says, I, "He says I I have a donation for the auction," and he hands me this little piece of of orange piece of wood. It's one of the communicators from Warriors of the Deep. And I'm like, cool, thank you. And then Gene, our you know from Alien Entertainment, who also funds Chicago TARDIS. Gene Smith, yep. No, no, he didn't set me up. Um, he suggested, you know what? Uh, we don't know if that's legit. Can you have Matt write this handouts? You know, write something to the effect. I'm like, sure. So I had some paper, and you know, again, uh, Mr. Irvine, I hate to see the. I, yeah, I hate to do this, but can we have, and mm -hmm. it was so cool because he not only was willing to do it, now we've got something mm -hmm. that, that it's, it's now you do have this prop. You have a certificate of authenticity mm -hmm. handwritten by Matt Irvine. I think the prop oh, yeah. went for like 250 or $300 that year, but it's, you know, it's still, it's one of the things that, that, and working, working Chicago tel TARDIS helped me work through which is not just um, because that, I think that was the year, my final year, we had Janet and Peter. Mm -hmm. hey, when, when, when you're, when you're const, for those who are watching, if you're constap and Ben can attend to this, it becomes, you get on the first name basis real quickly. Janet and Peter. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and, and uh, Sophie and, and um, Syl were there. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm in the green room and I'm trying to, cause it was one year we were helping Janet with, doing some, some friend raising for her. And it's this weird surrealist thing of, yes, I'm worthy to hang out with these people. And these people were people I watched mm -hmm. up growing to. And it's a very, mm -hmm. um, and it becomes this, you know, that imposter syndrome. I won't say it goes away, but you kind of start thinking through like, at least for me, it was like that. Maybe I'm not quite the, 
the geeky kid that I used to be. But yeah, to, to your point, yeah, I, I do get that a little. It's very easy for me mm. to forget that these are celebrities. These not only they're celebrities, they're people. Yeah, and they're people, but they're people I grew up with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, right now we call it parasocial, but yeah, there is that kind of, um, mm -hmm. that 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 kind of still that sense of. It's it's yes, I am I am enough, and I'm also dealing yeah. with the person I was at the oh. same time. Mm -hmm. Right on. Yes. Do you think exercise helps you become a better fan, or like has it helped? like increase your attention to certain things in fandom i think with exercise for me it's more about um like all i do i do a lot of walking and i think that comes mm -hmm. from with doctor who you know finding mm -hmm. wonder in the everyday so like mm -hmm. for me it's it's about going out and exploring and so i think it helps one it helps with you know it actually releases endorphins which makes me feel good but like that's about as much mm -hmm. exercise as I do. Like I'm not going to the gym and lifting weights, you know. I mean, maybe the only weight I lift is a coffee mug with tea in it, but that's about it. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's yeah. it's one of the things that I think, at least for me, Doctor Who talks about in terms of health, because I'm taking care of myself physically. Um, my last uh, doctor's appointment, which was two months ago. Um, and mm -hmm. maybe it was due to stress. Maybe it was due to everything else. I managed to lose 35 pounds in three months. I can't mm -hmm. claim Dr. Who's responsible for it, but it was also the fact that because I had treated myself in mm -hmm. a healthy way, um, it was one of those things I didn't notice. But I think I'm thinking of a line in, I think it's, uh, it's the parting of the ways. And I think it's true of classic Who as well as modern Who, where Rose mm -hmm. is talking about we're not just here to sit and eat chips. You know, the doctor teaches us a better way to live our life. Mm. And even if it's not fighting Daleks or mm. I think the fact that the doctor is a character who believes the best in people, who doesn't dismiss like people's being ordinary or unimportant, that he values the fact that humanity is having that sometimes getting through the day is an adventure. No kidding. And I think that to me that's what how doctor who impacts my fandom is that mm -hmm. before i would have thought oh my god i can't deal with this you know it's that it's that spirit that kept me through um from the time that a new property management company terminated the lease for me and 126 other people across six buildings well I remember you posted on facebook it sounded really scary yeah, and we organized and we fought back, just like the doctor would. You know, if the doctor is going to to be defined about the Daleks, mm -hmm. you know, I was, um, and when I finally got a place, you know, it wasn't, um, my new place is actually it's very in my in my in my heart it's very modest, but it's bigger and mm -hmm. it feels a lot. It's actually nicer to be in a place where you're wanted. Um, mm -hmm. and I think that's part of what Doctor Who and fandom have done for me is it's now increased my my mm -hmm. ability to my you know my self esteem, but it's also allowed me to really see that there's some things worth you know worth fighting for, and one of those things that's worth fighting for is my own health and welfare. I think it's mm -hmm. for me. I'm a big swimmer. Um, I like to swim in the world, swim in the pool at the Y. I think a lot of good ideas for concert and players about future productions and about future I things we can do. And that's just walking in the pool, but it, it feels great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fine. So it's go ahead. So yeah, it's funny works. So we got about 10 minutes left here. Um sorry, brain for see. Have there have there been any resources in Illinois that have helped you out a lot? Well, I, um, well, there are some, um, one is here in Chicago and with suburban, suburban Cook County and it's two, one, it's you dial two, one, one. Mm -hmm. So in Chicago, four, one, one is for emergencies. Three, one, one is for city services and two, one, one is for, you can call to get, to get information on various mental health and other services. Um, if you're looking at the entire state of Illinois, we have a warm line mm -hmm. for mental mm -hmm. health. Um, 
That is 866-359-7953. Um, and then if you're looking at Southern Illinois, because for a lot of people, a lot of people in Chicago don't understand that, yes, the state exists below Springfield. Um, there's Centerstone which is 855-608-3560. And for those watching, we'll, we'll try to have a card at the end with all the yep. listings so that, you know, yep. um, uh, in the Quad Cities, which is the, the mm. area that borders uh, Iowa, there's mm. the there's Quad Cities Mental Health at 309-764-5040. And then in the Metro East area, which is east of St. Louis, which is one of my, which is my old stopping grounds for a while. Uh, Chestnut Health at 618-397-0900. I want to talk about one more thing before I give my list, and that's community. Mm -hmm. Do you think since becoming part of fandom, you found a community? Well, the fact that I, yes, I think it's not just, um, you know, I could be flip and say, oh, yeah, it's the Chicago Doctor Who meetup is a community, but it was jennifer the late jennifer adams kelly reaching out to me oh, to yeah. ask me to be a charity director because she and i were kind of back in the day there were two big mm -hmm. doctor who groups there was the federation up north and the unit yep. of regulars in the south mm -hmm. and we were fans about the same time and through her i kind of connected with that larger community mm -hmm. um you've got mm -hmm. you know you've got you know we have the twin cities community and I think I do yep. feel like I'm part of a greater community. I think sometimes oh, yeah. it's easy to forget that, you know, that bigger community is much more diverse, much more um, lively, mm -hmm. and and has a di has a wider range of interests than we can even encompass. And to me, mm -hmm. embracing that and accepting oh, yeah. that, you know, somebody that I wouldn't think I would know is into Doctor Who, that to me is is a joy and something I really treasure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I I have found community within the concert room community within the fan community of Minnesota. But what I've like whenever I go to for a community tune up is a place called Vale Place in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And Vale Place is a mental health clubhouse. So we have a kind of a structured day, but we do activities, and it's a good place to go if you're looking for help with housing or finding a job, and we do social work activities. So if you're interested in that, their number is 612-824-8061. Um, we also have 211 in Minnesota, too. Is that through United Way in where you're from, when you're here, Gordon? Pardon? Is 211 through United Way where you are? I don't know. Okay, fair enough. And the second one is I want to recommend the Minnesota, Minnesota Warm Line. Because the Minnesota Warm Line has helped me, out, helped me with a lot of crises. I've gone through that have been fandom and non fandom related. Um, but their number is 651 288 0440. When we put the card up at the end, I'll have the URLs for both these and for Gordon's as well, too. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're looking for that, I mean, I cheapers. If you're looking for more, like you're looking for another party community to be, to be a part of, Veil Place is perfect. Mm -hmm. If you need to reach out to someone, give the warm line a call. Trust me, it's helped me out a lot of stuff. So, yeah, and I I think this is probably the the biggest point we can make in this panel, which yes. is, you know, it, it is easy when you think you're alone and you've got things pressing down on you. Um, reaching out can mm -hmm. help. If I hadn't reached out, if you know, and I think Ben can talk about it his way. Um, we would probably not be here. Um, I think it's it's very easy, especially with the more negative tendencies of fandom. But it's oh, yeah. it's also and just remember going out. You know, you are a unique individual. You you know you mm -hmm. are you know people care about you. People love you. Um, even mm -hmm. reaching out to someone that you're, you know, um, reaching out, even if it's to a neutral. Now, let me rephrase that. Reaching out of our isolation takes a lot of courage. There's a reason why the doctor never travels alone. Not because he's, you know, he needs someone to hold him back or he needs someone to give him permission. Because he recognizes that in himself, he needs some, he needs other people around him. 
and I think the biggest message that I can I think giggle was a perfect example of that mm -hmm. last week too. Mm -hmm. That sometimes, yeah, sometimes you need to just, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think if anything we've said has helped, we thank you. But it's, mm -hmm. if you if you thank need you. help, don't be afraid. Reach out. Exactly. Thank you, everyone. Again, thanks, and enjoy the rest of console room year eleven. Hope to see you. Hope to see you elsewhere. Take care.